welcome to the Bullcast Podcast. I'm Katie Pickler, and with me today is Court Winsett. Hello, Katie. And Cam couldn't be here for this episode, but you know him. He is the magic behind the scenes, so he may sprinkle in a little nugget here or there, but that's what it is. Nuggets. <laughs> Been a while for Twitter nugs. Um, not that we're going to do them this episode, though. No, we're, now that we're I not. Said that. Not, not. Now that you got people's hopes up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and there's the opening bell, because <laughs> something <laughs> needed to shut us up at that point. <laughs> Okay, so... Why do you work, Katie? You work for money so then you can live and you can buy things and do experiences and then, you know, take care of yourself, right? Isn't that why you work? Well, I mean, I think I think that it's interesting. You you, you definitely run across people that... that uh, and usually they're people like, you know, your your boss who, who will say something to you like, well, if the only reason you're doing this is for the money, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And... You know, I I get that, I guess, but um, also, you know, everybody needs a paycheck, or at yeah. least a lot of people need a paycheck. So if you're not doing it for the money, then lucky you, but the, a whole lot of people out there, I would say, I would guess probably the majority of the people out there that are working in any kind of job are at least doing it partially because of the paycheck. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's true, and it's always, you know, if you love what you do, then you never work a day in your life, and I mean, that's true. You want to find something that you're passionate about. Um, this episode and several episodes going forward are kind of coming out of me sitting in client meetings and prospective client meetings, and the same conversations keep coming up, and there's a lot of them end up being like aha moments, and so I said, oh, we got to throw some of these in some podcast episode. So obviously we're talking about working and the importance of it and how supposedly you're spending a third of your life at work. A third of your life. Well, I mean, if you if you consider, if you break your, break your day into, into eight hour sections, every mm-hmm. 24 hours, three eight hour sections, eight hours a day you work, uh, eight hours a day is the recommended amount of time you spend sleeping. And eight hours a day you spend doing whatever else you get to do with your life. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's about a third of your life there. And then those that, you know, may work 10-hour days or 12-hour days. Well, and sure. then you adjust all of that. And not only that, but, I mean, like, I don't sleep eight hours usually. Yeah, and... exactly. Um, so, supposedly, that's 90,000 hours over the course of a lifetime that you're spending at work. Dang. But, yeah. The average American spends about 100 hours commuting and by the age 30, most people have had seven or eight jobs. By the age of 30, seven or eight jobs. My land. That's crazy. Um, so that means they're still trying to find where their niche is, where they want to be, probably. Mm-hmm. They're changing yeah. it up. Yeah. Uh, 80% of workers out there hate their jobs. Now, that's none of us here. We love our job. I mean, just uh, <laughs> full disclosure, we're recording this on a holiday, so... Yeah, it is. <laughs> we, we voluntarily are up here because we want to make sure we keep getting content to our loving listeners out there. Mm. But um, no, it's, you know, that is a statistic out there that there's, there's a lot of people that hate their job and they are, they're not necessarily doing it for the wrong reasons because they're getting a paycheck, but... Obviously, you're you're spending so much time, and that's what I oftentimes, uh, you know, the last episode we, or two episodes ago when we were talking about family, I oftentimes am sitting there going, "Well, I spend all this time up at work, and then by the time I get home, I don't know like how y- people go home and then have like children they have to take care of. Like, <laughs> I can barely take care of myself." Like, I need, like, a gold star on my, like, bulletin board that I, like, got up and took a shower and fed myself and went to work. Like, that's an achievement. I definitely get kudos when I, uh, when I you know, wake up and, and dress and am productive for eight hours of work. That's, but then, like, Cam going home and he's got three kids running around. That just tires me out. And that it, just tires me out. And at any go- given moment, one of them could be sick or have, you know, after school activities, programs, whatever. But, okay, but we're focusing yeah, on work I, I know. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I I got crazy on that, but it's just, you're spending so much of your time at work and you know, most people, when it says, are you happy at the one place you're spending most of your life? And a lot of people say no. And it's, well, why? And they don't believe that they have the capacity to find something else, the ability or the time to do anything else. But the thing is you're spending so much time at work and you kind of want to enjoy it. So this is in a roundabout way, segueing into our list that we have, because you're spending all this time at work. What happens? 
you're, it's not necessarily your boss. Yes, you're dealing with your boss a lot, but it's your coworkers and you start to get bonds with them. I actually, um, jokingly the other day, uh, made a comment about court being kind of like my work husband and my dad, who also happens to be our boss, gave me this horrifying look of like, he's your what? (laughs) Because apparently that's like, a phrase that not everybody knows, but most people, if they have good coworkers and they have their, their, their niche, they have their best friends, they have their work husbands and work wives and all of that stuff because you are spending so much time and you think about it, these people can share in what you're going through on a daily basis because a lot of times you don't want to bring work home. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm very thankful up here. We have some amazing coworkers and it really is a family. But we uh, wanted to rattle off this list of shows about The Office Place. The Workplace. The Workplace. I mean, because some of these are not, definitely not Office. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, but so we've got a list of some of these and uh, kind of want to, as you're listening, think about, you know, which ones you'd actually want to work at and be a part of. Yeah. And we're going with strictly TV shows, it looks like on this one. Yeah. I just did so, TV. So, uh, you know, that this we're not even bringing into, to, into the picture movies like Horrible Bosses. Do you remember, remember oh. that one with Jason Bateman? Oh, yeah. And yeah. there was Horrible Bosses too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is just TV shows. You, you go ahead and kick it off. Okay, Parks and Rec. Mm-hmm. I still have never seen this, but I'm told <laughs> I'm a Leslie Nope. Okay, uh, you know. It, I don't know. Never it's, seen uh, it. It's 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 a uh, it is a classic television show, um, and uh, uh, I haven't seen it either. <laughs> it's a great example of office dynamics. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So next is Silicon Valley. Um, and I didn't particularly like this show. I did watch it, but I didn't particularly care for it. Uh, I, I, I found it, uh, <laughs> you, you tend to, I mean, you know, you want to show that you're rooting for the main characters and I kept rooting for these guys and it, it just kept, everything goes wrong for them all of the time. <laughs> it was very disappointing. Mm-hmm. And the next one, Workaholics, uh, have you seen this one, Corey? Nope, nope, haven't nope. seen it. Okay, well, it looks funny. It looks like it's got a funny group of people. Yeah, who's in it? I don't, I don't know. Funny okay. people. Well, this list is turning out to be very well, sad. What I've realized is making this list because I didn't. I mean, I stumbled upon a couple of different lists and combined, but I realized I don't watch a lot of these shows. So oh. Obviously, obviously, I have enough of my own office environment. I don't want to go home and watch an <laughs> office in, or a work environment. Okay, well, the next one is a classic sitcom that uh, I absolutely love. My son loves. We've watched it together many times. We watch it still, even though it's been off the air for many years, and that is Scrubs. I have seen this one, at least. It is fantastic. It's hilarious. Um, uh, Zach Braff. It, it is about a workplace, but of course the workplace is doctors and uh, and their interactions, and it, it is a sitcom, so you're not dealing necessarily with reality 100% of the time, because... There are certain circumstances that happen in this show that it's, would you think you would think would never happen in real life, but it is hilarious. Uh, yeah, so. they're not dealing with the whole, uh, you know, who took my red stapler and did you get that memo, <laughs> which is from Office Space, of course. Okay, the next one on this list is Veep. I've seen episodes of it. I haven't seen the entire sitcom. Um, you know, this is a Julia Louis Dreyfus uh, show. This was, um, let me see, post Seinfeld and also post. She had another network television show, uh, mm-hmm. or or one of the you know ABC, CBS, CBS NBC network shows. Uh, this uh, Veep was, of course, HBO, and um, the the episodes I saw of it were were funny. Um, it obviously it stuck around for a minute, so, and I think she was nominated. Julia, Julia Louis Dreyfus was was nominated for a couple of Best Actress yeah. uh, Emmys for for this role. So obviously, uh, people thought highly of her performance. Um, Another, another, like I said, every every episode I saw was funny. Uh, this was uh, office dynamics in the political uh, arena, so mm. <laughs> it had that it had that added sort of. Uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus plays the vice president, and uh, then you've got all of her staff around her that are an odd assortment of characters, to be sure. Okay, the next one is Thirty Rock. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. I didn't realize until an embarrassing, um, just probably about, you know, six months ago that people always talked about 30 Rock and I was like, yeah, I've seen that. I love that show. And they'd start talking about it and I'm like, maybe I missed that episode. 
For some reason, every time somebody say 30 Rock, which I've never seen, <laughs> I pictured Third Rock from the Sun. Ah. Totally okay. different Considerably show. Considerably older show, yes. Third Rock is. Third Rock from the Sun is, uh, is uh, yeah, much, much older. That's Jane Curtin, John Lithgow, um, Joe Golev. I mean, it, it's... It, yeah. it, Aliens coming to the Earth, to the planet Earth, the Third Rock. Like, yeah, of course, I love that show. Thirty Rock, on the <laughs> other hand, was uh, was developed and produced by Tina, Tina Fey, um, uh, as I have mentioned before, one of my daughter's idols. Um, it is another. It is uh, you know, it is workplace dynamics in the writers' room of a uh, variety show, very similar to oh, I don't know, Saturday Night Live. SNL, yeah. Um, and it is hilarious. Uh, Tina Fey obviously is always hilarious. Uh, another cast of crazy characters. Uh, um, golly, Alec Baldwin plays her boss, but it, it, very fu- very funny show. Um, and Tina Fey is brilliant. So okay. there's that. Okay, Brooklyn Nine Nine. I uh, have recently seen a couple episodes of this. Another hilarious show with a uh, Saturday Night Live alum. Um, so apparently, Saturday Night Live cast those members really like doing office related shows. Well, workplace okay, shows. so yeah, I, this one would be workplace dynamics in uh, police. A, a police station uh, in a precinct. Uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Okay, so it's got Terry Crews. It's got um, Andy Samberg. Andy Samberg. There it is. Yeah. So uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine is uh, the, the Saturday Night Live. Do you like how I know is... Terry Crews because he's the guy that can flex his pecs? That's I mean, <laughs> hot chicks, right? So uh, Andy Samberg, uh, the Saturday Night Live alum. Uh, this is this is another show that is hilarious. There's there's a whole series of shows that my son turned me on to, and this is one of those that my son got me turned on to, and. Uh, it is hilarious. Uh, it's it's got all the elements that I think make a good show. It's got uh, you know funny lines and a relatively attractive cast, which is really all it takes. So what Court is saying is it's funny. Okay, next one, uh, Ugly Betty. Never seen it. Don't want to. I I did actually watch this one. I really liked it, and it was about a a girl that didn't fit the mold necessarily, but she really wanted to work at this fashion magazine, and so it's kind of all about the office workplace and her being. Um, uh, kind of the this you know the one that doesn't the misfit at the office, but yeah. really was the hard worker and really changed the dynamic. Well, of- this was uh, this was uh, America Ferrera's big mm-hmm. break, yes. and I don't really I don't know a lot about it. I really did not ever watch a single single episode, but I do know that that she came out of it. Uh, people loved her in yeah. it, so they did a good job. Okay, the next one is is always funny and it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Court <laughs> just wants everything to be funny. <laughs> Funny, funny. And I have heard that this show is is funny. Uh, I have had the show recommended to me by two people who, um, who are uh, you know sitcom connoisseurs. Uh, pers- I'm not sure this how is the this one with one, Danny DeVito, right? Yeah, I'm not sure how this one really plays into the whole workplace. I guess because they're at the bar. Uh, okay, did does one of them like own the bar or run the bar? Do I they work so. at the bar? Okay, I think so. okay, I don't know. so workplace dynamics at a bar. Yep. <laughs> Okay, this next one is one that um, I'm sure Cam is kicking himself that we haven't mentioned yet, and it shall be in our office. She also uh, likes to harass me on a regular basis that I have never seen this show. I mean, it's almost like you're being willful at this point. Oh, you yeah, just I'm, not, I'm being not watching absolutely it at this point. stubborn. And that would be The Office. Yes, The Office. It's. I just feel like you, you every, just you just are being stubborn. You the, just everyone are, like, watches this show, and at the time, like. When it was really big, I was working at a nonprofit, and it was like a three-person team, and everyone said, oh, you watch this show, and you can find a character you relate to. Well, no, I, I couldn't. And so, yes, at this point, I'm just not watching it. I mean, maybe one day. I mean, I... She tried to get me to watch it when she told me that James Spader was on it. Okay. When I was on my James Spader kick, which I know yeah. you hate James, James Spader. James Spader would not be a draw for me, but whatever. I don't know that you could necessarily find a character that is you in the office. There are a couple of characters that are normal and everybody else is crazy. So, um, you know... You saying I'm the crazy one? I, I don't know. I mean, you know, <laughs> shoe fits and so forth. <laughs> Uh, okay. The last one, though. Uh, the last one is actually one that, uh, that that my wife and I just just recently finished watching. Uh, we had not watched it when it originally aired. It's called Mad Men. Of course, it is um, it is Ad Men on Madison Avenue. In uh, I think it starts in the late fifties or early sixties, and it goes through into the. It follows basically. 
uh, a decade of these guys or, or a little bit over a decade of these guys uh, professional careers in advertising and it is it's an Robert incredible show Robin and I both just kept watching it because we kept just I mean we it was really hard for us to explain why we got into it like we did we don't it's very rare that we find a show that both of us will just sit down and watch several it sucks episodes. You in and it it's obviously it's a fiction but it very much still has the elements and it shows you the timetables because it'll show like oh that's the Kennedy assassination mm-hmm. that's like when a major marketing campaign came out and really shows that kind of girl friday the how the secretaries in the office um the executives work together and how they would yeah. go and like sleep on their couch and have their full bars in their offices and just a very different dynamic to what Definitely sort of now, yeah. pre-women's lib workplace yeah. dynamics is, is how it very much how it started out. And then you sort of see as women's roles in the workplace As Peggy grew. starts to yeah. get to write and do all that, yeah. So v- really very interesting. The, the men in the show almost to a person are horrible human beings. <laughs> I mean, they really... I, I, I'm, you're hard-pressed to find a single guy in that show that is like a paragon of virtue. There's just... But you still have your favorites that you're rooting for. Well, sure, I suppose. Yeah. I mean... Okay, so that's our crazy long list. Um, that, obviously, there's I more I was only 11 there. shows. I know, but <laughs> it's... it's We talked about them for a long time. Obviously, the point of this episode is to talk about you spend all this time working, and at the end of the day, we're most all of us are goal driven. You start a run, and you're already thinking about the finish line. You're, you know, you're already counting down. You've got a trip plan. You're counting down to when that's going to happen. You've got graduation. You're counting down. So when you start working, you're counting down to retirement. That's hmm. what you're doing. And I've noticed over the you know past couple of weeks, we there seems to be this distinct you're either one way or the other, and there's very few in the middle of they never feel like they're ever going to be able to retire, or they're ready to retire right now, and they want to know the second they can retire mm. because they are just over it. And a lot of times those end up being like real young people, and it's like, well, you got to put in a little bit more time unless you you know find some Scrooge McDuck bank that you can go rob. I don't know. I tend to be a little bit. Um, I, I guess I'm. I, I guess I'm. I guess you might describe me as myopic. I mean, I just. I, I can't see that far down the road. I, I don't really see a time when I'll be able to retire, or it's just so far out of reach that it's not coming anytime soon. So instead of working for thirty years from now, I'm basically working for the weekend. I mean, that's <laughs> you know, that's all I'm doing. Okay, well, so then on this episode, then court is more of like short term, and I'm much more of the long term. But I mean, that's where what we do here at Pickler Wealth is, you know, we do these financial plans, whether you're 26 and you're just getting started or you're, you know, 55, 60, 65, and you're really trying to decide what to do. And it's looking at the whole picture and figuring out, you know, setting those goals of when you want to retire and if you're able to retire, because, okay, when do you want to retire? Well, earliest you can retire according to Social Security is age 62, but then you're going to be permanently reduced on the amount. But we're not getting into all those details today. Okay. This is this is much more of a holistic kind of overview of it. I don't want to sit there and say you need to have this much in the bank in order for you to retire. Well, it varies from person to person what exactly. your expense is going to be. So we we can't we can't tell any in, we can't tell a mass audience, "Hey, you can all retire at this age if you have this much in the bank" because it differs from person to person, from where they live, based yeah. on their expenses, blah 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 blah. That's like when we try the the terrible joke, but it's 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 kind of true is if we all had a barcode on the bottom of our foot that told us when we were going to die, then we could work backwards from that and know that we'd spend the last dollar on that day that we die. Well, I mean, we don't have that. We don't have a magic ball that we can see when things are going to happen. So it's all just planning. But retirement is really kind of, there's two ways to look at it. 
when you're financially ready to retire and when you're emotionally ready to retire. Well, it's funny that you mentioned the whole age 62. That's that you can, according to Social Security Administration, you can start taking early retirement at the age of 62. You will be penalized if you take early retirement, but you can. But I, a lot of the people that I talk to, they, they have 55 in their heads. I don't know why that is, but I've talked to a lot of people that are like, oh, I want to retire by the time I'm 55. Well, and see, the thing is that I throw out there when people say 55 is, okay, well, if you stop your job at 55, you can't get on to Medicare until 65. So then you've got 10 years that you've got to come up with health insurance. That's expensive. Yeah. So yeah, no that's question. something to factor into it. Like, yeah, you could have saved up all this money and be great, but you need to make sure you build in the benefits that your job was giving you. Okay. But so, okay, back to like financially ready or emotionally ready, because you can, and this is kind of one of the coolest moments when we do financial plans, especially someone that is cl very close to retirement. Like it's hard to do it with a younger person and say, oh yeah, you could retire at age 63 because we're, we're guessing and assuming what's going to happen and life is going to change. And so that plan will adjust as life changes. But someone that has come to us and they've worked really hard, they've put in all these hours, you know, spent over a third of their lives working. And for us to be able to say, hey, you know what, Court? You are financially ready to retire. You have enough assets that your dream for retirement can happen. But my question is, are you emotionally ready? Well, I mean, emotionally ready. What what goes <laughs> into being emotionally ready to retire? Um, I mean, you know, part of it is, look, if if you told me like all of the expenses that I have now, I could with the money that I have saved up, I could live my life now without going to work and still continue to pay every single expense that I have right now and do that until I die. That's great. But what am I going to do with my time? Mm -hmm. People already make fun of me because I come into the office on holidays. You know, <laughs> we're, we're what am I going to do if I'm just not working every day of the week? That just, yeah. I don't know. There's so much that goes into that. And that's where, so around here we have a phrase and it is, um, when you stop having to work for that paycheck and instead you're working for that play check. Hmm. And so that's a fun way to put it, that you have reached the financial ability to no longer do you have to work because you need that money, but that money can then be to enhance your retirement life. It can be for a trip. It can be for whatever you want. And so we call it that. I'm sitting in this meeting with this um, younger uh, potential client coming in, and he before we'd even gotten into the conversation about retirement, because this, I mean, this kid's young. We didn't even start talking about retirement. He goes, well, my goals would be for this, this, and this. And I want to, I want to have enough money when I hit age 60, you know, not billions, but enough that I can have that F you money. Which is basically like, you it, know, your boss like, upsets bye. you. You can say, forget this place. I don't, I'm, I'm out of here. Yes. So that, that forget you money. Yeah. And I'm like, huh. Okay, so whether during this episode you want to call it your play check money or your FU money, but I mean, that's that's kind of a different way to look at it is you're not necessarily looking for when can I retire, but when can I get to that point that I can stop maybe my career that is a lot of hours that I've worked really hard for and I can switch and it can be that mental mindset of, you know what, it's my choice if I choose to walk into the office and work today because I know I don't need this money, but I'm choosing to come to work. I would, I, you know, it's interesting. I used to fantasize about winning the lottery and quitting my job and so forth. But in my more recent years, I've, I've more considered like, well, gee, you know, if I won the lottery, would I quit my job or would I just have, you know, the money to, to be able to walk away from it if it became too stressful, but not, yeah. you know, but to, to be able to just go ahead and continue to work, for the for for the giggles of it. <laughs> yeah. We have so many clients that um they'll they'll retire from their careers and retirement doesn't last that long. Mm. Um it's real quick that they're uh they're coming in and they are um you know trying to come up with side jobs, trying to come up with something. Actually um you know Facebook can be 
awful at times, but I got a chuckle out of uh, something my neighbor posted and actually ended up sending it to uh, Court and Cam that it was this long post and it's this husband has retired and he said, honey, you know, I'll take care of going to the grocery store now that I'm retired and don't have to go to the office. Well, he ended up getting kicked out of the grocery store and it's because apparently he was doing all this like crazy stuff. I mean, pretty much like not harassing in a bad way, but just like playing pranks, like just had way too much time on his hands. Oh, yeah. yeah. Way too much time. And it's hilarious what all he was doing. He basically went to the grocery store and was playing a bunch of dad pranks on yeah. people. I yeah. mean, you know, it was it was all silly stuff. But basically, finally, the grocery store was like, okay, obviously, you have way too much time on your hands. And we don't need to put up with this. So, good luck. Yeah, they should have offered him a job as a bagger or something like that. I do, I, I do want to throw in there that we said F you money. And, of course, uh, that does bring to mind the, the movie... Uh, and or the song, um, Take This Job and Shove It. Although, I don't really remember much about the movie other than I think there were a bunch of mud mudding trucks, you know, trucks with giant mud tires in well, them. Well, I know it's a, a whole... song. I didn't know it was a movie. Yeah, it was. there was a movie. There was oh. a movie as well. Um, and, and, of course, there there was the song, and the, the, the sentiment is there, obviously. Take yeah. This Job and Shove It. That's that's pretty It's pretty clear. There's, yeah, because the lyrics, not a... like, you better not try to stay in my way as I'm walking out the door. Take this job and shove it. I ain't working here no more. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that's that's the kind of money you can have. Good times. Um, but so, so, many, so many people are ready to retire from their career jobs, but they still want that social interaction and that reason to get up. Or to avoid the honeydew list. You know, okay, so one of (laughs) my favorite lines, uh, one of my favorite lines from a movie, heck, I've probably even mentioned it on the podcast before because I... I mean, we've done over 80 I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot, but... Uh, a lot of times, uh, people ask me, you know, well, why did you, why did you come to the office? Why didn't you just go home? And I love the line from an officer and a gentleman, Richard Gere says to, uh, Lewis Gossett Jr. Um, uh, I got no place else to go. I got no place else to go. <laughs> it's because Lewis Gossett Jr. is just about to kick him out of the Navy. And he's like, no, don't do it. Don't you do it. I got nowhere else to go. And so, you know, people, people ask me why I come to the office. And I'm like, oh, I got nothing else to do. <laughs> you know, my, my kids are gone. My wife's at work. I might as well come to the office. That's where all my friends are. <laughs> well, and it's, I mean, it's so much of it is that there have been a lot of studies that have shown that having a retirement gig or a side job that doesn't have the stress of maybe what your career was is really beneficial to your health, your health, excuse me, your health, health, Um, because it's, you know, it can provide an extra cushion. So there's not that stress, even though you've been told you can financially retire, it can give you that additional social interaction. It can help you to make sure that, you know, you've got a purpose and that, Every day you're going in and somebody is expecting you to be there, but it doesn't have that stress of if things get crazy, you can just kind of, you know, take this job and shove it because you don't need it. But I know that there have been a lot of studies of keeping your mind engaged and that a lot of people, when they retire, if they just go from being like so high energy to just stopping then they can start really deteriorating fast unless they keep themselves engaged. So it can actually keep you healthy. It can keep you, first of all, physically active. It can keep your mind active as well. So there, there, are, there are definitely perks to staying involved in the workforce in some way or another. Yeah. And it, it could be that if you do retire from your career and you're financially able to retire, you're able to find something that can give you that health benefit that you may need, or even an additional retirement, Um, you know, have a 401k or something that you can contribute. So there's other things that go with it that if you could have your little side gig, uh, we joke that a lady here in our office, she, she technically retired in December, but then she's still on board because she's such a sweet soul and she's going to help us out for another couple more months. And I joke that her perfect retirement job would be to get a school bus and go around and pick up dogs and go and like, I don't know, take them to go run in a field or whatever it may be. But it's just, you know, there's definitely a need. People would pay for somebody to come pick up their dogs to go let them run some energy out. But she would be the happiest person in the world 
driving a bus with a bunch of dogs. Yes, because she likes animals, not because she likes driving a bus. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know if she knows how to drive a bus, yeah, but... She may not, but... She, she'd get her license She does love it. dogs, so there's yeah. that. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's just... There's something to the... Uh, there's something to that in how it's kind of changing your mindset of, oh, I don't know when I'm going to retire, but maybe I don't know when I'm going to stop working for a paycheck and start working for that paycheck. Mm. And... um. I mean, it's just, it's a great opportunity to have that and really change that mindset. Well, like we said at the very beginning, it is, it is, I would imagine that it is a very high percentage of people, despite the fact that, that many employers would object to this mindset, a high percentage of people are working because they have to, Mm -hmm. because they need the money. And so they are working for a paycheck and there's got to be a nice mental shift when you can go from having to work to just choosing to work, yeah. you know? To I just... mean, David Pickler's never going to retire. He's going to be up here as long as he is able to be here. Mm. And you see that with a lot of companies. I know there's a there's a great logistics company in Memphis who's been around for a really long time, and they're on, I think, generation number three in charge. But the senior of them all comes into work, um, you know, twice a week maybe and it's in between his golf schedule so he has that balance of the leisure life of retirement but also the purpose of he's still coming in and, and supporting I know a guy uh, who I um, who, who who is does not work for us or with us but he he works uh, like geographically very close to close to to, to my office um, and um He's got, he also like, he, he is in the financial planning industry, but he's also got a, got a liquor store business on the side. (laughs) And, you know, I've always thought that if I ever were to, um, to have like my own business on the side, it would be a bookstore. And I had kind of forgotten about that as a, as a, like a retirement dream. And then the other day I took my daughter to the bookstore because, um, I wanted to get her some books for her birthday, but I didn't know what she wanted to read. So... I took her into the bookstore and it had been a, a since since before the pandemic started. I haven't been into a bookstore mm-hmm. in a couple of years. It's been a while. And I walked in and I just remember that sense of when I walk into a bookstore, I just get this feeling of peacefulness that I don't get in a whole lot of other places. And so I've always just thought like it would be really cool to to have a bookstore and to to be able to you know, it may be it may be that running my own store like that, especially in a, an industry like books that are probably yeah. it's harder to make it these days. So it may be even more work and more stress than the job that I do now. But I just feel like it would be some doing something for fun. Yeah, you know, something to look forward to. And, yeah, and have that shift. And it's still then, you know, it's I think so much of it is that. Um, Another expression that David says a lot is that uh, couples, when they hit the retirement age, it's like they married you for better or worse, but they didn't marry you for lunch. Because it's like if you've got the spouses that both have been working or maybe one's just been working together, and then now every single day you're having lunch with that spouse, you love them, but you kind of need a break sometimes. Like, do you Mm. not have somewhere to go? Like, can you leave, please? Why don't you uh, don't you don't you have some errands to run? I, I told you, you have a club you can go get to? out of the house and go do something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that. I have to ask on your bookstore. Would you be like the Meg Ryan or the Tom Hanks bookstore? Oh no, 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 no! I would definitely be the 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 shop around the corner. Okay, like That's the, what the I, small okay, sure. bookshop. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not a I'm not a, a, a like a, a book connoisseur by any stretch. You know, I don't know a lot about antique books and collectible books and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I'm not saying that I wouldn't be willing to learn, but you know, I, I'm as just as long as you don't turn into Joe from you. I mean, he likes books. Oh, now I see. I haven't watched you. Oh, um, okay. Well, <laughs> but uh, but I, I would I, I would think a small shop um, would would be. You know, maybe a, a secondhand bookstore or something like that, or uh, a, yeah. a, a, you know, something more along the lines of collectibles. Um, but I do love I love walking into a Barnes and Noble. So many books, yeah. and it's just I mean, you know, they they don't have the rules that they have in a library, but for some reason, when you walk into a bookstore, it's still really very quiet. Yeah. And so I, we're kind of throwing this stuff out there, and and you may be listening, going, "Oh, this is great and all," but. That is something we can build into a financial plan. I can sit there and build into that you're going to be making X amount in your career up until you quote unquote retire and then build in a 
a lot of times I call it your retirement gig or your fun job or whatever and say, oh, you're going to try and make, you know, $15,000, um, you know, for the next five years. So we can build this into an analysis and have fun with it and see like, does that work out and how does that change your plan? Now, I do want to throw a caveat out there because it is, you know, financial planning. Obviously, um, this is something that it's unique to every person. You've got to punch the numbers, but you do want to be careful if you decide to have a retirement fund job that you're cautious with Social Security. Because if you take Social Security early and you're making X amount of dollars, then you could end up impacting your Social Security benefit. So that number is constantly changing as the time goes. So as you get to that point, just make sure before you pull the trigger of Social Security, you figure out how much income you're going to be bringing in because you do not want to get slapped with that being, a oh, you made too much money. Mm -hmm. So it's all a huge planning thing, but it's just, I'm about to bullseye myself before I get to it. I'm going to stop. I'm going to catch myself. Why don't you just, uh, why don't you just uh, call it, call it, call it a day. Um, You know, I, and we'll, we'll just, we'll just go right into our bullseye. If you've got a bullseye, Katie, why don't you just give them your bullseye? Okay, my bullseye. Um, This episode is not like a reference to office space that I want you to just walk in there, take the red stapler and say, you know, I made that F you money Bye. I'm, you know, take this job and shove it. Not telling everybody to t- just to leave their jobs. What I'm trying to do is tell you to look at things in a different way and strive not to hit retirement age, but to hit that financial ability that you really have that opportunity that you're just working for a paycheck instead of a paycheck. And then you just have to emotionally decide where you want to go next and what maybe new adventures up, whether it's a bookstore or driving a bus with dogs or, um, you know, being a consultant, whatever it could be, but that there are different ways to look at it. And there are tons of planning software that can really run different analysis to try and give you those different roads that you can possibly take. So that would be my bullseye. You're up court. Okay, I was just thinking while you were talking about your bullseye, just a, a, about some of the some of the different things that I've thought about doing over the course of my life, and you know, never really have I landed on that one. You know, okay, so like for instance, um, Devil Wears Prada. Um, I can't remember the actress's name. What is the what is the 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 actress? Anne Hathaway. Anne Meryl Hathaway. Street. Anne Hathaway. So her character. She, she knows what she wants to do with her life, right? Mm-hmm. She knows she she's got a career in mind that this is the career that she wants to do, and she goes in to work uh, for for Meryl Streep's character and Miranda Priestly. Yeah, and she's really really good at the job, right? And mm-hmm. you know she she gets her act in order, and she you know she really excels being Miranda Priestly's assistant, basically, and she goes from a size six to a size four or a size eight to a size six, or I don't know, (laughs) you know, everything is wonderful, but uh, bottom line, she's got a boyfriend who is completely unsupportive of her career with Miranda Priestly. And you could argue as the bad guy of the film. Uh, And so, you know, she, she has that whole show going on in the background and then she remembers, Oh wait, this isn't really what I wanted to be doing with my life. I wanted to be a a writer. So, Mm She quits that job. She just up and walks away from it. And I was thinking about that and I was going, you know, what do you have something, first of all, while you're working? Are you working in a job that you love? Are you working in the career that you felt like this is what I was meant to be doing? So, you know, do you have that? Do you have that job that that you're like, yeah, this is going to carry me through until I retire Mm -hmm. or you may just not ever even consider retiring? You may be like a like a David P. Pickler or a, a Miranda Priestley, who I doubt very seriously Meryl Streep's character is ever going to retire from that job. No. You know, you know, you just, it just fits with you. And so you may never retire. You don't even want to think about it. Well, even if you just are like, yeah, I'm going to work until the day I die. Wouldn't it be nice to know that you could, if you needed to, you have the money set aside to be able to step away if you need to. If family calls, if you want to spend more time with grandkids or if a family member is, you know, doesn't have much time left and you want to be able to spend that time with them, then there's those unique opportunities. I do have to jump in with whole, like, sometimes you may think you know which direction, like Katie Pickler from, uh, hell, probably like 15 years ago, 10 years ago, never thought this is what I would be doing. I, I thought if I was going to do anything with, uh, my dad's business, it was going to be being an attorney. Mm. And 
I did not like numbers. I did not like math. And now this is what I'm doing. So it's also kind of one of those, like sometimes roads lead you different directions. And then you look at one job as a stepping stone to the next job and you're always looking for the next thing. Well, I guess, I guess really what I was, I don't think I said clearly what I was trying to say, which is in that movie, you've got two very different kinds of people. You've got the, um, you've got the Anne Hathaway character and Mm -hmm. you've got the Meryl Streep character, right? And Meryl Streep's character is in a job that she is probably happy staying in for the rest She's of her life. She's a lifer, life. yeah. Um, and Anne's, Anne Hathaway's character is not in the in the career that she thought she would be in. Mm-hmm. Um, and so whether you're a, a, an Anne Hathaway person and you think, no, this isn't the career I want to be in for the rest of my life. I'm going to have to find something else. Or you're a Meryl Streep and you've already find the, found the job of your dreams and you feel like you're never going to retire. That doesn't negate the fact that it is in your best interest to have that money set aside to give you the option to step away. Mm -hmm. Whether you're stepping away because you want to pursue your dream or you're stepping away because you've reached an age where you've you've decided that you want to spend more time with your family or you want to spend more time traveling. Isn't it nice to have that as an option, to have that money set aside so that you have that ability to step away from whatever it is you're doing at the time. Yeah. So that's kind of my bullseye. I like it. It's a good one. And that doesn't happen overnight. That's, you know. It takes some planning. Yeah. It takes some planning, for sure. Oh, well, what do you know, Katie? There's the closing bell. Okay. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, you've made it to the end of yet another episode of the Bullcast Podcast. If you like what you heard and you'd like to hear some more, please feel free to go to your favorite subscription service and sign up to have our podcast beam directly to your phone or other listening device every Thursday at noon. If you'd like to find out more about me and Katie and Cameron, who couldn't sadly be with us today, please feel free to go to our website. That's bullcastpodcast.com. You can read our bios. You can leave comments about the episode. You can leave suggestions for new topics for episodes. And or you can always throw out pop culture references that you think we should have made that we did not. Ladies and gentlemen, you can also reach out to us the same way or about the same topics on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at Bullcast Podcast. And if you like looking at pictures or you'd like to post a picture and tag us in it, please feel free to do that on Instagram. That handle is also at Bullcast Podcast. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, Katie and I work at a place called um, Pickler Wealth Advisors. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wealth advisory firm. Cameron works with us. We all work together under David Pickler. If you'd like to find out more about what it is we do there, what the company does, find out about our amazing team, and find out about, find, find out about our boss, David Pickler, please feel free to go to that website. That website is picklerwealthadvisors.com. Advisors with no, not that, an E. That is correct, Katie. Ladies and gentlemen, I have given you all of the instructions. All you have to do is be the type of person that reads the instructions. Go <laughs> forth. Be happy. For now, I'm Court. I'm Katie. And goodbye. <laughs>